myself. Colleen, you want a sticker? This is right like in the center there? Right in the uh, elbow crease. You're gonna bend your elbow. If you turn around, I could use it as a model here. Bend your elbow, mm -hmm. you go right to the end of the elbow crease, and your little bone right there next to your elbow, midway on the, on the crease, that's LI11. So if you're having hot flashes, that would be the best point to use. So at that point, clears heat. So you bend your arm, and more, okay. like that, and then you go from the end of the elbow crease, mm -hmm. the bone right there, and you press right on the line, right in the center, and that's it. Mm -hmm. So this, so what, what's another thing that people get when they're hot? Maybe, can you think of something else people, what happens when you're hot? Another pattern or disease that, you know, people say, you know, I'm hot. You get it a lot, you can get it when you're sick. Very easy term. Fever. Fever. So if you have fever, this would be a good point to press. LI11, help clear heat. Mm -hmm. um, the next of the eight principle is cold. So we did hot, now we're gonna do cold. Um, a cold uh, hormone imbalance would be hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism, people tend to be cold. They tend to feel cold. Um, so with this, when you take the patient's pulse, their pulse will be slow. So when they were, they were hot and feeling hot flashes, they had a rapid pulse. When they're cold, feeling cold, and have hypothyroidism, they're gonna have a slow pulse. And the point you'd wanna do for this is gonna be, it's called REN6. Now this point's on your belly, so I don't know if you guys wanna pull out your belly, it's a little chilly. Yeah, my shirt's <laughs> <But yeah. laughs> If you put your fingers on your belly button, yeah. two fingers right below your belly button, mm -hmm. that is REN6. So if you're feeling cold, put a little point so you could, My daughter has... Does she have uh, hypothyroidism? Yes. And so that's a good point for her. That would be a good point. You want to feel one, Kyle? You want to put one on you? Yeah. yeah. You all right? How many <laughs> points in the acupuncture and all that? There are... Is it 100 or something? There, there's, a, there's like uh, 361 points in the body, but that's not including extra points and extraordinary channels and all these extra... There's all these more points than that. These are points that are on 14 channels in our body, um, which kind of follow nerve pathways in the body. So another eight principle that we mentioned was external. Um, external is typically not a hormone imbalance. When someone, when we are, we're di diagnosing and we say something is an external, they're presenting with an external pattern. That's not typically a hormonal imbalance. That's something when someone like catches a cold. You know, I caught a cold. That's an external pattern. So the way we treat using acupuncture and Chinese medicine is a, with an external pattern is what we do different is we put the needles very superficially in the skin. So the needles don't go in deep into the skin. They just just very lightly into the skin. So if you come in and you say, I'll have a cold, I'm sneezing, you know, my nose, my eyes are watering, we'll put the needles in just very superficially in the skin. Now, if someone has internal pattern, which is what the hormones fall into that, hormone imbalances fall into the internal category, what we do with that is, we just like that, so we put the needles now deeper into the body because we're dealing with something that's deeper in the body. So the needles will be inserted deeper into your body. Not too deep, just deep, a little bit deeper. Uh, the next of the eight principles is excess. An excess pattern in Chinese medicine that deals with hormones is stress. Everybody has stress. Stress is a, your cortisol levels raise, you're feeling stressed out. Now when a patient presents with this, I mean obviously we all know what you feel like when you get stressed out, but something we'll see in Chinese medicine is they'll stick out their tongue and they'll stick it out and they'll stick it out straight, like straight and hard. <laughs> they stick their tongue out. And people don't even realize it. You say, let me see your tongue there. They stick it right out. <laughs> it's, it's pretty funny. But that's what people do when they're stressed out. Their tongue just sticks out. When you say, let me see your tongue, they stick it right out really hard. Now the point you would use to treat something like this is something we actually all do naturally to a friend if they're stressed out. Or sometimes you can do it to yourself. Um, the point is gallbladder 21, and we put it right here. Now, when your friends are stressed out, a lot of times you'll walk up to them, you know, and grab their shoulders or you feel yourself, oh, you know, going like this. You're actually giving yourself a treatment. That's how, you, that's the point right here. You can access the point by pressing on it, just pressing on it, or you can give yourself a nice squeeze. So if you reach the opposite hands out to your shoulder and give yourself a little squeeze right here in that muscle. <laughs> yeah, it feels good. And it's not just that it just feels good. You're actually accessing an acupuncture point called gallbladder 21 that decreases stress. So I can show you where it is. 
you're not gonna see the stick, so I won't put it on you, but so this is it, right here. So you push down like this and that's it, or you just give a little squeeze, and that's another way to access it. I'll show you two. So I went right here. The adrenal, the diaphragm, and the total effects is what is left. Right, with the reflexology. Yeah. Same thing over here. Yeah. Sorry, this is above water 21, and you just squeeze right there before you press down. So that's that's uh, it feels really good. It's yes. <laughs> yeah, that's a, it's a real it's a real thing. It feels good. And it feels good. 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 Somebody else does it to you. Yes, <laughs> it is. You really can't feel. I you can't feel how good it feels. Yeah, but you know, you know when you you know when somebody's sitting down, you might put your hands on. I mean, you know, I'm a touchy feely kind of person. You are too, because you're people like right. this, you know. But you know, you just put your hands on somebody, you give their shoulders a little bit of a squeeze, and it yeah, you know, helps like, decrease their stress levels. Yeah, it's like being at the hairdresser. Oh, just get it out. I know, right? Just, just massage my hair. A little bit more. Right? I know, I know. Um, now another. So we have we just spoke about um, excess and not the stress, and now we'll do deficient, which is the opposite. So deficient, a deficient hormone imbalance is impotence when people have a low testosterone level. Um, and so what you'll see with that is they will stick their tongue out and if you could guess, what do you think their tongue might do? With deficient pattern, flops. right? It flops. It hangs down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Yeah. It's good. So you stick their tongue out. And I'll be home right now. Hangs out, just hangs out of their mouth, um, and that's because they have a deficient pattern. They're they're they don't have enough energy to hold their tongue out at a normal strength. So their tongue tends to hang out of their mouth. Yeah, this is they also do like if your tongue is red, what color of the tongue color yeah. is very important. Yeah, thing. yeah, it is. So how does that how does that relate? What, yeah, to like testosterone, you say? Yeah. Or, uh, well, it's it's very detailed. Diagnosing is very very detailed. So we use just you know the, I'd say you know when someone does have a testosterone deficiency, you know one thing you can see is the tongue sticks out and it just hangs out. But you can see a lot of other things too. Um, you know when we look at the tongue, we look at the color of the tongue, the the shape of the tongue. Like I said, how they hold it out. Sometimes people hold it out in a quiver, so maybe the tongue might quiver. They hold it out actually shaking, like they can't hold it out. Mm -hmm. Um, we're looking for the tongue. You, you look at the you look at the tongue coat, the tongue color. Uh, you're looking at a lot of different things if you look at the tongue, but we do use a lot more than that to, to diagnose. We look 